the things you said on our first episode was that African life is an expression of spirituality, mm-hmm. and that's powerful. Can can you ex- can you um, explain more on that? Because I think it's something that people need to understand. As contrasted to um, Eurocentric religious experiences, which are uh, time based, which are church based, which are venue based. You know, you must go to church on a Sunday morning and. Uh, come here once a week or twice a week, depending on what kind of church you, you're coming to, then you practice the godly within those spaces. Apparently, you cannot speak anyhow in church. You can't uh, do certain things because you're in a holy space. Fair and fine. You come to African space, we might not necessarily have a place. We have places, sacred places. In other words, there are places for the rain, there are places for disease, there are places for war, there are places. And we access these spaces to speak to us what we want to hear on a spiritual realm. So whether we're eating, it's a spiritual exercise. When drinking water, it's a spiritual exercise. When we shake each other's hands, the words we exchange, if you expand those words and hear what we are saying, it's a spiritual exercise. When we sleep, It's a spiritual exercise. Please go and talk to those that are in the shadows of the night. Bring us messages in the morning when you come back. In the morning when you wake up, what did they say in the world of the sleeping? That's Mangwana and Inshona, for example. Mm. When we get married, it's a spiritual exercise. The unification of families, the cutting of animals that goes in there, the blending of the spiritual families. You're not marrying an individual. You're marrying a whole family. You're marrying a tribe. So this is so and so. This is the aunt. This is the uncle. This is what what and the spirituality right there. So it, it's, when I say it's a daily expression, therefore you don't have the schizophrenic mindset mm-hmm. that says now I'm in church and after church, church now put off those clothes, take off that jacket. Now I'm in the world. So you end up having this schizophrenic mindset that tiptoes in in two spaces. And to me, spirituality can't be that. You are the bodies, the temples of the omnipotent. You are the open letters that's not be read by anybody that is passing on the side of the streets. The, the, the spirit lives in you. You are in him, he is in you. I don't know how much people read this Bible. I don't think they understand it at all. Because if we understood what that meant, therefore you, I don't even dwell in houses that are built by men. I dwell in houses that are built for myself and your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Now you look at the depth of that Who needs to go to another building? Who needs to go to another shrine when actually the biggest of all shrines and temples and centers of spirituality is the inside part of you that must be conscious to where it is coming from, where it is, and where it is going, particularly what it must be doing in the now to transform the future and correct the past. So we may think that it's politics. To me, it's spirituality because politics plays on lost power and spirituality when we lost our land we lost our spirituality we lost our connectivity to the piece of land that we can't do politics of politics without politics of spirituality politics of spirituality restores land to its rightful owners so that they can practice their rituals and lifestyles and culture in their own space So before, and you cannot talk about economic progress, academic progress, entertainment progress, if you are not talking about people being indigenous and being in control of their means of production. That speaks to their present feeding, that speaks to the access going for the market. That's business. And without land, you have no home, you have no business, you have no road, you have no tree. You have no grass, you have no house, you have no mineral, you have no water, you have no mountain, you have no river in a flat in town. You have no vegetables. So all other forms of political commentary that are void of land conversation are not political conversations. They are a a circus, a mascot of European mischief. The only politics we need is the politics of land. Then they say you must have two wives. The first wife is land. The second wife is the one who gives you children. And if you don't have the first wife, you will abuse the second wife. Mm. And instead of fighting over 
second wives or girlfriends. We need to fight over the first wife. Who is land? Men right now would kill each other for a wife. Kill each other for a girlfriend. But who amongst us Africans right now are as passionate about land than they are about women? 